All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to another video. This video is all about landscape photography and we are going to be hiking and finding a spot to camp in the mountains so we can enjoy sunset photography and sunrise photography. My bag is overladen, too heavy. I've got too much stuff basically, but for now we better get cracking so we've got a heck of a slog up into the mountains. Oh. Completely, <laughs> completely forgotten to mention the sponsor of this video. If you're a, a company and you're thinking about sponsoring this channel, I wouldn't bother, I'm a liability. Anyway, the sponsor of today's video is artlist.io. And uh, yeah, you'll hear more about that once we get set up and we get in the tent later on. Okay, now we're all <laughs> So I am um, I'm writing a second I'm writing a second book. Uh, I've got a first one, Landscape Photography on Location Volume 1, which I wrote a few years ago now, and that's still available if you if you want fancy a copy of that quick plug. Anyway, it's almost finished the second one, but one of the sections that I'm stuck on, one of the paragraphs, not paragraphs, one of the chapters I'm stuck on, is the hiking and landscape photography chapter because I'm constantly contradicting myself saying that in order to have a successful landscape photography hike your gear needs to be accessible but here I am on a hike and my gear is not accessible <laughs> struggling on a chapter because uh, I keep contradicting myself so here is a perfect contradiction come on get that level <laughs> I mentioned before about my bag being heavy. Well, part of that is put all my filters. Yes, yeah, so I have to say that looking at this scene in front of me, I'm glad I did because it looks like it will benefit greatly from a polarizer, which of course I always forget goes in the back, the back of the filter holder, like so. Let's have a look now. Just adds a touch of richness and contrast. So this shot, man, it's all about the light. I believe we're looking at the Pike of Blisco. It's beautiful, perfect cone-shaped peak. And the light that's hitting it is, is fantastic. We've got late afternoon light with scattered clouds, so it's dappled light. And the, the, the sky beyond the peak, it's not a blue sky. It's, it's very, very dramatic, dark gray clouds full of rain. And I'm hoping it doesn't rain, it's not forecast but with the dappled light on the rich spring green grass with the foreboding sky behind and the, the iconic shape of Pike of Blisco. Yeah, it just looks it's just perfect. Just a beautiful shot, I couldn't resist. It was, it's always always a struggle, always, always a race against time in this kind of light because the wind's blowing the clouds, the light's moving. One minute the light's on the subject, the next minute it's not on the subject. Ah, but well worth it and well worth dig digging and rummaging through my bag to get my gear out. Ah, oh, right, I'm ready. I'm ready to set up camp now, so uh, not too much further. I'll start to get settled for the evening. This is more or less where we're going to be uh, camping. And, ooh, the clouds moving in, the clag. It could be really good, because it could give us mood and atmosphere. Or it could be terrible, because it could <laughs> just engulf the whole area. And we'll be sitting in cloud all night. I don't know. But anyway, before we set up camp, it does look like there's a shot just behind me. With a bit of luck. Oh, man. Light's gone. Mmm, light's gone. Well, that's a shame. The, um, there's a lovely shot just behind me. See this peak here and all of these crags, they were bathed in beautiful soft light and there was a gentle mist rolling over it, giving it loads of depth and atmosphere. And in the foreground, you've got this beautifully stiltana distribution of rocks and green grasses. It looked really nice. 
Uh, but I've rushed over to set up my tripod, get a nice low angle on there to to really get make the best of the whole scene and composition. And well, the light's gone, and and it needs the light, and it looks really flat without the light. Um, it might come back, so I'll just leave my camera set up in situ. And uh, well, this is where we're camping, so we'll get a camp set up. So that is camp all set up. You've got my tent behind me, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, and uh, a little bit of food in the jet boil, which I'll have for tea later on tonight. I've also got with me a uh, platypus water filter, and of course I'm camping right next to this tarn, so endless supply of water, which is nice. Yeah, plus a bunch of photography equipment, a drone, filming equipment, clothing, <laughs> food, snacks. Ah, oh, my bag was bag was so heavy, too heavy. I've even let me show you what else I bought. Hang on, I bought a light. <laughs> uh, it's nice. It's a magnetic light, and I've got this extra magnet here, so that'll just sit basically anywhere in my tent. I can just clamp it in place. You can change the color temperature and the uh, intensity of it, and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, I thought not only would that make for a great camp light, uh, it's also handy for filming. But yeah, it's little whoa, it's little things like this that basically. Yeah, make the bag weigh a ton. I could have easily shaved four kilos, you know, easily. So um, I've given up on that shot next to the tar, and it's just the light wasn't happening. And I've come for a bit of a walk away from my tent, and there's a beautiful, beautiful valley behind me. And what struck me when I first saw it was the the scale of it. Do you see this arcing, this bowl-shaped ridge line here? Well, that just is the perfect frame for a pano. This, this head, this leveling tripod head, this bowl head, and this arc, this um, Acrotec two-way head, and all that sort of stuff. This was designed, bought this specifically for moments like this, where you can just throw your tripod down, not worry about leveling, leveling your tripod because you just level the base. You just level it from the base, just like this, and that's it. Now we're ready for a pano. Easy. So, better get cracking. Oh, look at the light. Yeah, man. So the first thing I do when I shoot a pano is I swing the camera around covering the entire scene to make sure that not only is my camera level, but the area is correctly exposed, you know, because the, the bright right-hand side of the sky is so bright, the left hand quite relatively dark, so you don't want to blow out the right-hand side of frame and not realize until you've taken seven or eight images and you get over there. I've got a two second timer on each image gonna fly on my face and I'm just overlapping my images by about a third each time you know play it safe I would rather shoot a pano with too many frames than get home and realize I didn't shoot enough frames and the reason I'm using a two second timer is because as I move the camera and press the shutter there's a little bit of shake so those two seconds allows the shake to settle and we have a nice sharp pano I also forgot to mention that when you shoot a pano Make sure everything's on manual, so manual focus and manual exposure because you don't want each frame changing every time you uh, move the camera and take another shot because then it's a bit of a nightmare to stitch together afterwards. Alright, 
Oh, so that is the the water filtering. Did you enjoy the transition from the from the image <laughs> to the filtering of the water, uh, which is the most tedious transition into a, a sponsor ever? Yes, today's sponsor is Artlist.io. Artlist are a music platform so they provide all of the music that you've heard in this video and music for my videos especially is vital it's so important it can't be understated it's as important as the video work the images in the video the presenter the storytelling everything and i thoroughly enjoy finding great music that sets the scene for all of my videos because i try to be quite i try to put quite a lot of emphasis on storytelling and uh, music is everything with that they also do sound effects <laughs> So they're a great, they have a great catalogue, all independent artists. And if you want to sign up with Artlist and use music for your YouTube videos, well, it's $9.99 a month um, if you commit to a year. If you don't want to commit to a year and you just want to do it month by month, I think it's about $15. If you have a subscription, right, and you upload a video, um, even if you finish your subscription, so you only do it for one month, the license for that music and that YouTube video is good. You're not suddenly going to have to start paying for this song, you know. So long as you had um, a subscription when you uploaded the video, you're all good. So there you go, artlist.io. So the light faded over where I was before. So I came back to the tent and noticed that we were getting a little bit of light on the... Uh, on this peak which is on the opposite side of this tarn but we're getting a bit more mist the mist seems to be rolling in a bit more it's dropping a bit so we've got atmosphere tiny bit of light which comes and goes but it's just on the peaks so you can just make it out it gives it a bit of depth everything's so still and calm and, and this scene that i'm shooting now which i abandoned before is it's now come to life ah oh, it looks so good it looks so good. I'm focus stacking. I might not need to focus stack, but I don't want to take the risk because we have immediate foreground with this grass and the rocks. We obviously have information and detail in the background, although that's naturally soft because of all the mist. I just want to make sure I've got all my angles covered. So I'm taking a shot focusing on the foreground, shot on the midground, and a shot of the distant background, focusing, of course. Yeah, this could be shot of the trip. Shot of the trip. Oh, my knees! Ah. for a bit of a walk away from my tent just because it looked like it could get interesting over towards Scarfell Pike which is the direction I was shooting uh, much earlier on with all the light in the valley so I thought I'd come and enjoy my chicken kima curry here all right here we go if it's one it's disgusting if it's five it's amazing so that's my my rating system Three and a half. Tastes good, texture terrible. But that could be that I didn't put enough water in or I've not left it long enough, but I did put enough in and I have left it long enough, so. Three and a half stars. All right, check it out. It's quite it's quite tight in the tent, but you can see, I've got this, uh, this light magnetized to the tent which is very handy i'm just gonna get in the in my sleeping bag oh and then somewhere there we go i've got myself a nice cup of tea still hot mm. so we are almost almost at the summer solstice 
so the nights are very very short sunrise <laughs> 4 40 a.m which is probably in about five hours um so when i go to bed i don't bother i, don't, I just sleep in my clothes it's uh, it's just so much easier i don't expect to get much sleep tonight just a couple of hours and then i'll be waking up ready for a sunrise shoot whether or not I shoot around here or hike up one of the peaks nearby. Well, we'll all see how we feel, see what the light's doing, see what the conditions are like. But for now, I'm gonna relax with my nice cup of tea. Enjoy the sounds of, well, the sounds of camping, really. It's really quite nice and relaxing. And are we steaming up? I would recommend camping to anybody, wild camping. If you're a photographer and you can get a little tent and a sleeping bag and a sleeping pad go out when the weather's nice you don't have to go far it's really good for i mean it's obviously it's great for photography because it's an it's an adventure it's just good for the soul it really is anyway i'm gonna leave it there i will say good night and i'll see you all in the morning hopefully for more photography Good morning, what a beautiful morning it is. <laughs> I uh, actually slept quite well. Uh, woke up before my alarm, popped my head out of the tent and saw the potential makings of a beautiful sunrise if we just spin you around there. You see that gap there in the clouds? That's where the sun's gonna rise. So as the sun comes up, it could light and paint all of these clouds here. So with that in mind, I've gone for a little walk away from my camp and up towards Crinkle Crag, so up one of the uh, this peak, this large rocky outcrop which I'm now standing on. But as I'm climbing higher and higher, uh, it's becoming more and more apparent that this is not the place to be to shoot. It's, it's not gonna work at all. So my best chance of a shot this morning is to actually hike all the way back down to camp, get to one of those tarns. There's three tarns where I'm camping. One of them's quite big, there's no wind. I'm going to hope for a nice, simple reflection shot of this sky. Because, yeah, from up here I'm going to be shooting straight into the light. It's not going to work at all. It's going to be contrasty. and There's no, there's no subject, no focal point, nothing. Yeah, so <laughs> better get cracking. I'll, uh, I'll probably see you again at the water's edge. Ah. <sighs> Ah, uh, this is this is uh, difficult. I would say this is one of the most frustrating things about being a landscape photographer. And I'm sure we've all experienced it. Is when you have beautiful light, but you cannot compose it. You can't find a shot that works with that light. Um, from where I am now, this tarn is difficult to shoot. You know, yes, we have the beautiful colour in the sky, but there's nothing else. It's so contrasty. The, uh, the composition is so uneven because we have bow fell to the left of frame, which is this big peak here. It really puts all of the em emphasis on one side of the frame. And if you uh, try and shoot it without bow fell in the frame, well, it's basically just a shot of nothing. Oh, maybe there's a shot this way. Oh, I'm struggling, but I think I've just, just realised my mistake. Ah oh, man, so I mentioned before that I met, uh, thought I knew what my mistake was. Well, my mistake was shooting towards the light, you know, focusing on the sunrise this direction. Whereas in fact, there was a lot going on behind me over here to the west. Um, so I tried to compose a scene using some boulders here in the foreground, the nice still water. We have this mountain range, the scar fells just over there in the distance. But again, I was having the same problems when shooting to the east, and that is Bowfell, this big mountain here, always getting in shot, always on the edge of frame and tipping me 
out of balance, drawing the eye. Ah, it's frustrating. Really frustrating morning. But fine, like, you know, this this happens. This is commonplace. <laughs> so don't, don't be put off. I suppose I could have planned it a bit better, but, you know. Yeah. What can you do? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I can't believe you didn't shoot any images with that beautiful light. Well, I did, um, but the problem is I was really struggling with my composition. You can see here from these unprocessed RAW files, they at first glance look great. Beautiful colors, beautiful subject still waters, but the composition and the balance, it's all off. And this is what I was really struggling with on that morning. So if you've made it this far into the video, thank you very much. Um, if you've enjoyed it, give it a like. Like it's probably the best thing you can do for the creators that you follow, the people that you enjoy watching. Just give them a like, leave them a comment, engage with the video. Uh, it gives it, it gives it a huge boost. Um, so yeah, if you can do that, it'd be great. If you can subscribe, if you're not a subscriber, even better. Uh, yeah, and if you really, <laughs> if you really want to push the boat out, and you're particularly enjoy today's video well i have a book available yeah so there we go i'm gonna enjoy my coffee enjoy the rest of the morning and i'll see you all next week <laughs>